Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Text 38 is Abhidure Braja Bhuva Saha Gopala Tarakai Charayam Asatur Vatsan Nana Kridha Parichadau The translation Not far away from their residential quarters both Krishna and Balaram, equipped with all kinds of playthings, played with other cowherd boys and began to tend the small calves. 39. Kava chid vadayato venum, kshepanai kshipata kvachit, kvachit padai. Kikini bhi kvachit kritrima go vrishai. And now we're coming to the verse that's on the board. Vrishayamanu nardantau. Vrishayamanu nardantau. Yu yudhate parasparam. Yu yudhate parasparam. Anu kritya ruter jantum. Anu kritya ruter jantum. Chera tu prakrito yata. Chera tu prakrito yata. For the word for word, because 39 and 40 are together, is it better to read the word for word for both verses or for only the second one? Okay. So I'll just read on my own. For the first text 39, kvachit sometimes, vadyata blowing, venum on the flute, kshepanai with the device of rope for throwing, kshipataha throwing stones to get fruit, kvachit sometimes. Kvachit padai, sometimes with hi, hi, the legs. Kinkibi, with the sound of ankle bells. Kvachit, sometimes. Kritrima go rishai, by becoming artificial cows and bulls. Now we'll do together. Vrishamano, imitating the animals. Nardanto, roaring loudly. Yuyudate, they both began to fight. Parasparam, with one another. Anukritya, imitating. Rutai, by resounding. Jantun, all the animals. Cheratu, they used to wander. Prakrito, two ordinary human children. Yata, like. 
Translation Sometimes Krishna and Balaram would play on their flutes. Sometimes they would throw ropes and stones devised for getting fruits from the trees. Sometimes they would throw only stones and sometimes their tinkle bells tinkling they would play football with fruits like bale and amalaki. Sometimes they would cover themselves with blankets and imitate cows and bulls and fight with one another, roaring loudly. Sometimes they would imitate the voices of the animals. In this way, they enjoyed sporting exactly like two ordinary human children. Purport by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Kijai. Vrindavan is full of peacocks. Kujat kokila hamsa sara sagana kirne mayura kule. The Vrindavan forest is always full of cuckoos, ducks, swans, peacocks, cranes, and also monkeys, bulls, and cows. So Krishna and Balaram used to imitate the sounds of these animals and enjoy sporting. Mm. Om Angyana Timurandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshulam Militam Yenam Tasmai Sri Gurve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Pandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatan Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Ancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Siyadvaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So first of all I really want to humbly beg the blessings especially of all my seniors uh, for speaking here I'm very embarrassed to speak in front of all of you. Um, sometimes a parent may enjoy when a child is just speaking in broken language. The child doesn't have any knowledge or anything, but just they enjoy how the child is going on. So in the same way, please be uh, liberal with me. Please forgive me for my mistakes. Um, there was no purport to text 38, but still it's very nice. Not far away from their residential quarters, both Krishna and Balaram, equipped with all kinds of playthings, played with other cowherd boys and began to tend the small calves. So this is like a new phase in the pastimes of Krishna. We heard yesterday from Maharaj how uh, the residents of Vrindavan, because there was so much 
terrorism in Gokul, they decided to shift to Vrindavan. And those pastimes in Gokul, the prominent relationship that was there was the relationship between Krishna and his parents. Jai Sisi Krishna Balaram Ki Jai Sisi Gornitai Ki Jai Sisi Radha Sham Sundar Lalita Vishakadevi Ki Jai So in Gokul that parental relationship was very prominent and we heard uh, beautiful stories Mother Yashoda bound baby Krishna when he was being naughty and uh, Mother Yashoda and the other gopis were very concerned when the demons came like Putana and Shakatasura and in the last incident uh, where Krishna toppled the Yamal Arjun trees by uh, the grinding mortar that he was tied to. So now they have shifted to Vrindavan and they have begun to tend the small calves. Uh, and so this is a very important, beautiful point that Prabhupada has a lot to say about. What is the importance of protecting the cows? Krishna is showing us something about that very important point. This, now he is starting to protect the calves or, or herd the calves. Um, Herding cows means you have to bring them to the direction that you want them to go. And cows are very strong. Even young calves are very strong. So as, as a small boy, you know, the calf wants to go this way, but you need it to go that way. You have to make the endeavor. And it's uh, not such an easy thing to do. So they're still small. So first they have the smaller calves before they, you know, go for the, the big cows. Uh, from the Vedic scripture, we can understand that if you want to know the health of a society, if you want to know how moral is that society, how dharmic, how religious, uh, how advanced are they in terms of human potential, you can check one barometer. You can just check one thing and then know everything. And what is that barometer? What is the condition of the cows? How are the cows doing? When the cows are in a good condition, then that society, that human society will be in a good condition. Uh, there will be morality, there will be dharma, there will be religion. And in that society where the cows are in a bad condition, that will be a degraded society. It's a very important point to consider. Um, how are we taking care of the cows? How are the cows doing? Uh, because that will have a direct impact on how we are doing. If someone values cow protection at all, they might think, yes, we can hire someone, they can help with the cows. But here in the Krishna Leela, who's taking care of the cows? It's the most important person. Krishna is directly taking care of the cows. Balaram is directly taking care of the cows. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is worshipped by unlimited devotees. But what is his job? Taking care of the cows. Srila Prabhupada has a lot to say about this uh, and just we can review maybe some few comments. Um, from the first canto, oh, one example that's given there in the first canto that's very nice. When it describes the kingdom of Maharaj Yudhisthira, we know that the great battle of uh, Kurukshetra was fought and the, res the result was to enthrone Mara Yudhisthira as the emperor. And he was such a righteous emperor, such a great devotee, such a perfect ruler. 
When the Bhagavatam describes the condition of his kingdom, it says two things, and from those two things you can know everything. It says that when Maharaj Yudhisthir was ruling, the weather was very perfect. The seasons were coming on time. The weather was, was in a very perfect condition. That was his good rulership. Now that's one indication how things are going well. <laughs> and the other point was the cows were so joyful that the milk was naturally flowing from their udders and was muddying the ground. The cows were in such a joyful condition. If you have different experiences with cows, you can feel immediately, uh, you can feel immediately when cows are, are happy or when they're in distress. Like here at our Iskan Goshala, cows tend to be very friendly and, and in a very positive mood. And you know, they may come to you and, and seek your attention. And that indicates that they have good relationships with human beings. <laughs> And we've had the experience of going other places um, where cows are not treated well. That's m in most places. And the cows tend to be very fearful. If you'll approach the cow, you know, to give a scratch or something, the cow will immediately like recoil in fear. And then you understand, this cow feels that human beings are its enemy. So, because cows are very sensitive in that way. So in Maharaj Yudhisthira's kingdom, the cows were in an absolutely joyful condition. And that's the indication. If that's, if that's there, then you can understand how nicely the kingdom is being run, how, how everything is, is being done well. So anyway, we can consider this. <laughs> In our personal lives, if we have any business managing cows, uh, keeping the cows in a good condition. Here, I always have been looking at this painting for years. Sh uh, Krishna is embracing his cows. How do the cows love Krishna? How Krishna loves them? What a beautiful scene. When, the, when cows are fearful, you can't embrace them like that. They're very strong. They will not let you do that. But these cows love Krishna and Krishna loves them. From, this is from a purport in the first canto. Just we'll hear a few instructions from Srila Prabhupada about cow protection if that's okay. For a sanatanist, a follower of Vedic principles, it is the duty of every householder to have cows and bulls as household paraphernalia, not only for drinking milk, but also for deriving religious principles. The Sanatanist worships cows on religious principles and respects Brahmins. The cow's milk is required for the sacrificial fire, and by performing sacrifices, the householder can be happy. Mm. In the Kali, uh, the cow's calf is not only beautiful to look at, but also gives satisfaction to the cow, and so she delivers as much milk as possible. But in the Kali Yuga, the calves are separated from the cows as early as possible for purposes which may not be mentioned in these pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. The cow stands with tears in her eyes. The Shudra milkman draws milk from the cow artificially, and when there is no milk, the cow is sent to be slaughtered. These greatly sinful acts are responsible for all the troubles in present society. One more time. These greatly sinful acts are responsible for all the troubles in present society. So, a religious person is taking care of cows and getting milk and also getting the benefit of religion. <laughs> uh, but sinful people, they don't understand this. And they are behaving in such a way that the cow is crying. 
with tears in her eyes. And they're abusing the cow in so many ways. From Bhagavatam we can see Kali Yuga practically begins from abuse to the cow and it goes on by abuse to the cow. People do not know what they are doing in the name of economic development. The influence of Kali will keep them in the darkness of ignorance. Despite all endeavors for peace and prosperity, they must try to see the cows and bulls happy in all respects. Foolish people do not know how one earns happiness by making the cows and bulls happy, but it is a fact by the laws of nature. Let us take it from the authority of Srimad Bhagavatam and adopt the principles for the total happiness of humanity. So foolish people don't understand this, but we, we will earn our happiness by making the cows and bulls happy. It is a fact of, of nature. There, there's a nice story in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he once met an astrologer who was said to be an all-knowing astrologer who could tell about past and future. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked that astrologer, please tell me, who was I in my last life? And so that astrologer, he went into meditation. And when he came out of his meditation, he says, he says, sir, in your last life, you were the supreme personality of Godhead, full of opulence. And again, in this life, you are also that same supreme personality of Godhead. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, I think you don't know who I am. In my last life, I was a cowherd boy and I was protecting the cows. And because of those pious activities, in this life, I've been able to take my birth as the son of a Brahmin. And so that astrologer, he said, <laughs> he, said uh, he said, when I went into my meditation, I saw a vision of you that was full of opulence. Anyway, Whoever you are, I offer my humble obeisances to you. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada has a very, very nice purport in that section on the same point. I thought we could hear that as well. The words of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the greatest authority, herein clearly indicate that one becomes pious simply by keeping cows and protecting them. Unfortunately, people have become such rascals that they do not even care about the words of an authority. People generally consider cowherd men lowly members of society, but herein Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirms that they are so pious that in their next lives they are going to be Brahmins. The caste system has a specific purpose. If this scientific system is followed, human society will get the greatest benefit. Heeding this instruction by the Lord, people should serve cows and calves and in return get ample qual quantities of milk. There is no loss in serving the cows and calves, but modern society has become so degraded that instead of giving protection to the cows and serving them, people are killing them. How can they expect peace and prosperity in human society while committing such sinful activities? It is impossible. So anyway, I think there may be so many things to say on this point, but that's something. By how much benefit there is to protecting cows and how Krishna is setting the example of being a cowherd boy. Of course, our point is not to imitate Krishna's pastimes. We should follow them. And so we can't imitate Krishna's Ras Lila. We can't imitate Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill. But we can follow Krishna's pastimes. And on this point of protecting cows, we've been told this is the point worth following. <laughs> so the next verses, 39 and 40, uh, where Prabhupada writes his very, very short purport, are a very, very wonderful meditation on Krishna Balaram. 
Sometimes Krishna and Balaram would play on their flutes. That's one thing you can say about being a cowherd. It's not like having a job in a cubicle somewhere behind a computer. <laughs> um, there's, there's considerable freedom. You know, the, the cowherd boys, they can, they can learn something like flute also and become very advanced. Krishna was such a first class flute player, <laughs> the, high, the best flute player. Because there's an amount of leisure that comes with, with herding the cows. He had time for playing flute also. Sometimes they would throw ropes and stones devised for getting fruits from the trees. Sometimes they would throw only stones and sometimes their ankle bells tingling, they would play football with fruits like bale and amalaki. Sometimes they would cover themselves with blankets and imitate cows and bulls and fight with one another roaring loudly and sometimes they would imitate the voices of the animals so we can picture how Krishna and Balaram sometimes they would take blankets and they would play as cows and bulls and imitate their fighting very charming and they would imitate the voices of the animals in this way they enjoyed sporting exactly like two ordinary children so, different people will under see this and understand this in different ways. For the non-devotees, they can't understand this. Because we are, we're not talking about ordinary children. We're talking about the Supreme Personality or the Supreme Personalities of Godhead. But here they're acting like ordinary children. So who can understand that? Only the devotees can understand that. And there may be a progressive process even to coming to this understanding. Like Srila Prabhupada said, Bhagavad Gita is the um, undergraduate study for the students of Krishna consciousness. So first we have to get our bachelor's degree in the Bhagavad Gita. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is the master's program. That's a more demanding program for the you know, more qualified people who have completed the bachelor's. And the Bhagavatam also has 12 cantos. And before coming to this 10th canto, we're meant to systematically progress because this is a very confidential thing. This is a very intimate, confidential point, how the Supreme Personality of God it is playing like an ordinary child. And what do we have to understand? What's the context that we have to grasp before we can appreciate this? And if we've come to this point, then we can appreciate how wonderful are the pastimes of Krishna and Balaram and Vrindavan and how wonderful it would be to be a part of that and serve and serve in those pastimes. The, this, this literature is meant for, for attracting us to come to that position. And for the great devotees, they can appreciate my son is playing and the and, and his friends can think how my friends are playing and his lovers may think how our beloved is playing. So by different angles of vision, you can see this verse. And it's very wonderful meditation on Vrindavan Dham, on Krishna Balaram, what are their activities. And this purport, Srila Prabhupada, Vrindavan is full of peacocks. It should be full of peacocks. Still, you can see peacocks less in the urban area, but many times by the Goshala you find many peacocks. Or if you'll go a little bit outside of town to the more rural area, you can actually see so many peacocks. And then Srila Prabhupada quoted this verse from the Sad Goswami Astaka. I should find that also. Pujat ko kila hamsa sara sagana kir ne mayura kule nana ratna nibada mula vitapa shi yukta vrindavane radha krishna maharni sham prabhajato jivartha do yo mudha 
Pandeirupasanatano Raguyago Sri Jivago Palako. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the six Goswamis, namely Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, and Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami, who are always engaged in worshipping Radha Krishna in the transcendental land of Vrindavan, where there are beautiful trees full of fruits and flowers which have under their roots all valuable jewels. The Goswamis are perfectly competent to bestow upon the living entities the greatest boon of the goal of life. So this point Prabhupada was highlighting. In the transcendental land of Vrindavan, there are beautiful trees full of fruits and flowers which have under their roots all valuable jewels. Prabhupada quoted like this in the purport. And he says, the Vrindavan forest is always full of cuckoos, ducks, swans, peacocks, cranes, and also monkeys, bulls, and cows. So Krishna and Balaram used to imitate the sounds of these animals and enjoy sporting. So, it's a very beautiful, charming, wonderful description, and we should feel attracted that we want to, uh, we also want to serve these pastimes and give up this nasty material existence and be with Krishna, with Krishna and Balaram in Vrindavan. And one, just one final point I thought to make. We may have the question, you know, this is a very high subject matter. And, um, you know, what is the relevance here? How can we, how does this apply to us? Um, you know, how, how can we relate to this? This is just a story in a book. And so I want to say something about how we can hope to approach these pastimes. Um, and for that, you have to see how the Acharyas are praying. Uh, how they are worshipping Krishna in Vrindavan. Uh, and so something I thought, this is the so one of the song books of Naratam Das Thakur, Prarthana. And here he's praying, aspiring. He wants, to go, he wants to go to Vrindavan, he wants to go back to Godhead. Um, and that desire should come to our hearts also. I won't poorly read the Bengali, but I'll just read the, uh, the English, just of one of the bhajans here, because this will give an indication of how we can approach this kind of pastime, this kind of description. Narutam Das Thakur says, O Lord Hari, when will my condition change so that I can abandon everything and go to Vrindavan? When will I give up wealth, followers, sons, wife, and go to Vrindavan. When will I forget all my distresses and simply reside in Vrindavan? When will I maintain my livelihood by begging like a bee? So like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also praying in the Shikshastaka, Nadanam Najanam Nasundarim Kavitam Va Jagadisha Kamaye Mama Janmani Janmani Shure Bhavatad Bhakti Rahaitu Ki Tvai. That's our qualification for advancing in Krishna consciousness is we have to give up the lower taste of material sense gratification and pray to get a higher taste for serving in Vrindavan Dham. Also, in our offenses to the Holy Name, uh, we know one of the offenses to not have complete faith in the chanting of the Holy Names and to maintain material attachments even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. So that's our obstacle to coming to Vrindavan in a real way. <laughs> that's our obstacle to um, serving the pastimes of Krishna and Balaram in Vrindavan. So Narutam is, 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 is praying, when can I give up these petty material attachments? When will I consider the water of Yamuna as nectarian and drink to my full satisfaction? When will I take bath in the waters of Radha Kund 
and lie down on the banks of Shamakund? When will I travel to the twelve forests where various pastimes of Radha and Krishna took place and roll on the ground? When will I fall at the feet of the Brajbasis and inquire about the locations of the pastimes? He's always praying like this. When will, when will this come? When will this come? That is, that's a very important point. The Acharyas are instructing us how to pray, how to, how to, how to cry. Like Prabhupada is saying, um, we should chant the holy name like a child crying for its mother. So what are we crying about? Not please feed me, mommy. We're crying, when will I give up material sense gratification? When will I become fit? to reside in Vrindavan. When will I see the place where Krishna ate with his cowherd boyfriends? When will I visit the forests and sub-forests of Vrindavan? Hankering in this way, Narottam Das desires the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. And just one more, one more point on the same theme. In this first bhajan, which is in our Songs of the Vaishnavacharyas, uh, Srila Prabhupada has a, has a purport here on this same point. Vishaya chadiya kabe shudha habe man. When my mind will be completely purified, uncontaminated from the, material contam from the material contamination, at that time it will be possible for me to see what Vrindavan is. In other words, one cannot go to Vrindavan by force and live there and expect to achieve transcendental bliss. No, one has to make his mind freed from all material desires. Then one can live at Vrindavan and relish its transcendental benefit. Srila Narottam Das Thakur says, Vishaya Chadiya Kabe Shuddha Habe Man when my mind will be freed from the contamination of this material enjoyment and I will be purified, then it will be possible for me to see Vrindavan as it is. Otherwise, it is not possible. So, maybe we'll leave it there if there's any comments or questions.
that if you have any kind of mental anxieties, you make a call for one hour, it costs a hundred dollars, hundred euro, and it's paid by the insurance. It's paid by the insurance. And you can go and press the cow. The cows they press you, you will press the cow. And this has a huge beneficial influence on the mentality of human beings, just like caressing the cow. This is the point. You allow me uh, one point more? Uh, no, I think that's it. I'm very sure. Prabhu, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. That was too good. We're told that we should not play frivolous sports. So children naturally have an inclination to sport and have fun. We see Krishna is sporting and having great fun. And so Prabhupada Maharaj was a little stern on his friends and and sometimes in our society we may look down that you know why are they doing frivolous sports? What's your comments on this? <laughs> wow. The material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. So like you know, if, like the banyan tree example that's in Bhagavad Gita, and if you think of a reflection the things that are higher in the tree, in the real world, are like lower in the reflection. The, the things that are higher on the tree in the real world will be lower on the tree in the reflection. So in the, in the uh, material world, activities that are taken for our personal sense gratification uh, may be a lower moral standard, but when they're done in, when Krishna is doing those same things and the objective is serving Krishna and acting for Krishna's pleasure then it can be very wonderful so it may be that we need restrictions against frivolous sports uh, to control our lower nature and our tendency for sense gratification but if it's for the purpose of serving Krishna and his Leela then those same sports may be very desirable is that okay Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu? Uh, Close. Uh, Prabhu, as you said that uh, uh, as uh, by giving so many instructions, uh, we are uh, still having the, uh, we are still maintaining the material attachments. Yeah. So basically, uh, we are students, so we have to do our study. Uh, by, uh, and also, we have to do I think the art of work is, it is described in the Bhagavad Gita we want to become to the position where we are like a lotus flower even the lotus is in a dirty pond but does not become wet so we may have duties in the material world but we should do them in such a way that we don't become uh, more inclined towards sense gratification we should do it in such a way that we it increases our devotional service that we become more attached to Krishna and so by continuing to hear and chant and being detached from the results of, uh, of your study taking it as a duty this is my this is my assignment this is what I need to do uh, in this life in this world and so but I'm not going to try to enjoy the fruits for my own sense gratification I'm going to act in this way um, but for the pleasure of Krishna and I'm going to try to increase my Krishna consciousness by hearing, by chanting, by serving. That's a simple answer. Is that all right? Okay, thank you. We will leave it there. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.